Cause you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass. Oh yeah. Welcome back. So today, well, we've already fitted some new dash speakers, an edge unit, and some rear speakers. I'm going to go one step further because, well, I've already shown that we've adjusted the handbrake up, and as is well documented, if you do want to attract a mate, a perfectly executed handbrake turn like this one. Then you're halfway there. But another thing that you want to do is uh on a pumping stereo. And uh well this one, this is this is pretty pumping. <laughs> It's not quite there um so like i said we've got new front speakers we've got back speakers and a new edge unit and the next thing well the next step is obviously a sub in it so that's what we're doing we're going to put a sub in and this is the sub that i'm going to be installing um 12 inch fly and the best thing about it is well it's got a built-in amp so yeah, if you're properly into stereos and stuff, you're not going to go for one with a built-in amp, more than likely. Uh, but this is a small car, 12-inch sub, but should be way more than what we need. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier. Uh, I think it's only... Well, I haven't looked at the specs, really. It says it's 1,000 watt, but that won't be real watts. It's probably 250 watts RMS. But that's enough. Uh, so this is everything's on our amp that we've got to, we've got to do. We need... Power, we need switching power, we need a ground, and we need some inputs. And for stereos that don't have phono plugs, it's also got high level input, um, which you can just put straight from the speakers. But before, well, you know what, first let's go and see if it actually fits in the boot, which it nice and snugly does. Perfect. But before we can get any of that working, I've got to install this. And before I can install this, I've got to undo this packaging, which is, uh, you know, it's the sort of packaging that they put, well, Satanists put on child's toys, um, you know, when they open them at Christmas and then can't play with them for four hours before they actually manage to open it. So I'm going to open this really carefully and neatly using the correct tools as always an hour later and we're getting somewhere great success right what have we got here now this ones these two they need to go from the back of our stereo that we recently installed professionally to the boot where the sub's going to be this red one that that needs to go from the B82 res and then back into the boot with a fuse, that fuse, that high quality fuse next to the battery or as close to the battery as possible. Properly mounted as always, as you can probably imagine. And then this is the earth. So just a quick explanation of what they are. That one turns the amp on, comes from the back of the radio antenna lead. It's just a positive output which comes on when the radio's turned on. Um, then are phono leads, which you know, RCA plus, but they're going to call them phono leads, and they transmit the signal. So, this is the shit bit of fitting a sub. You know, this is a, this is the this is the wanky bit that never really want to do. It's running wires. This isn't too bad a car to do it on. I mean, I'm no stranger to this. I mean, I've done it before. And I could probably bore people with, well, details of that. But I'm not going to. Um, I'm just going to put this in here with a nice basic little sub with a built-in amp. As easy as it comes. So first, I will start by opening the bonnet. And then, in my last video, I routed a wire 
Hold on, let's focus, focus. Rooted a wire down there and in previous videos, and I've just put it through that bung where the heat matrix pipes go. So I'm just going to do the same again. So I'm rooted through there um, and up to here. Not going to connect anything yet because, well, I don't want it to go on fire. There's my fuse for my battery, you see. If that blows, everything goes out. That's, that fuse is actually for main fuse for, for the battery. Um, but yeah, let's try and get this wire through. Now, under here, as I said, I've professionally installed some other wires before. And uh, the observant among you might have noticed it's actually night time when I'm doing this. So I'm using using the phone to show you what I'm doing, but I'm actually using it to show me what I'm doing. Quite badly on both counts. And then when you've got it started, you just ram it home. Once you've got it in there. And not gonna lie, I hate this bit. This pulling wires through everything. It's a proper ball it. Even on an easy car, it's just a pain in the dick. It's just not a fun thing to do, but we're doing it. As if by magic, we have a wire. So I want to bring enough through so that it will reach our battery. So I'll just root, just root it somewhere up there out of way for now. That's that bit done. Now this is now going to have to go rooted to the boot, as I already said. But so is all that shit, which is going to come out roughly round here in this area. So, pull our stereo out for about the 5,000th time. Find the screwdriver. Fucking hell, there's gonna be nothing left of these threads by the time I'm done because this has been off so many times. Should just go and get the right tool. But... Yes. I'm surprised it all done so well, actually. It's been off that many times, this. This knob has been pulled off a lot. Can't get it off. So after I've aided the assistance of the other hand, set this off. Now, I don't know if I should be showing this or not because I have shown this in multiple previous videos. This, as I said, this front has been off a lot of times. We take that screw off and just give it a tug. Like so. So that gives us access to this monstrosity. And at this point, we realise something that sort of fucks things up a bit. Um, there's no phone outs on the back of this quality instrument. So I'm still gonna run I'm still gonna run the cables, not the phone or leads. Because the amp on the sub has got a high level input, which means I can put it direct from from the speaker outputs, you know, high level input to it. So it sort of screws things up a little bit because it means that I can't separate the sub on the equaliser. I can't turn the bass down on everything and then turn the sub up. Well, I can do it on the amp. You know, I'll have to do it a different way, but it won't be as good. Um, you know, there's no high pass filters or anything on this shitter. Um, so it does narrow down the prospects a little bit. But we can still make it work, providing everything does work. So for now, I'm just going to wire, well, this wire and a blue wire into the boot. This blue wire, which runs up the back of there and comes out here. And I need to join that to our aerial antenna or remote output on our stereo, which is that one. So I need to join them together. It's usually blue, make sure before you connect it, but that all that does is put 12 volt out when the radio's turned on. So that turns your amp on. So I need to join them two together, which I will do now. Like so, with our nice straight crimp connector. Um, they're not the best connectors in the world, but if you do crimp them with ratchet crimps and you crimp the full length, you know, rather than leaving the ends open, this is how I do them anyway. And it seems to make a decent connection. But 
that is all that's going behind there. Oh, look, that's one come unplugged. Better plug that back in before I put it back together, aren't I? Uh, that's all that's going behind there because of a lack of phono outputs on here. So that will have to do. And I'll put that back together and then run, run some cables. So uh, let's get that out of there. Put it back where it lives on there. Until next time it comes out, probably next week. And put that shitter back into that. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, just make sure nothing's come out like the aerial. Because I have pulled that out. Yeah, everything is still seems to be plugged in. Right, let's put that back in. For about the 400th time. Oh, the hazard light switch still works from a previous video. Right, I'll screw that back together. Don't need to see any of that. Like that. And let's route some wires. Which I have so far got to there with uh, this was already cable tied up from previous videos with multiple other wires behind the, you know. And uh, well, I've just cut the cable ties off and I'm putting them all together with, with brand new cable ties, these ones here, which is fine because, like most of my consumables, I, uh, I nick all that from work, so it's free. Uh, so I need to. Uh, get that to there but before i cable tie that up i need to run it down the back of here and pull this shit off now there's already wires down here as well from other previous videos and i'm going to run the wire well let's see if i can do it without taking ages of feeding it through before everybody gets bored and goes watches proper youtube channels or something better on tv rather than me trying to unravel a piece of fucking wire so let's do this in real time I was pointing the camera no one knew what I'm doing oh we got a peak of it then now I need to grab it which isn't Nah, I know I need to grab it. So you see where I'm going with that. And the blue one is going to follow it. Like so. And another free cable tie later. Let's snip these off. Let's put them to our wires behind it. Absolute neatness. So these will just be out of sight, out of mind. As you can imagine, just pushed underneath the edge of the carpet until they make it to here. And I've just run them in this gap to the, and as long as the rubber goes back on, that will do. Um, it's not the neatest install, but you won't be able to see any wires, and it's also not the worst that I've seen. I mean, I shit you not, right? I've actually seen people put subs and amps in, right? And the wire's just been rooted down here and it's gone up here and it's actually gone round through there and then under the bonnet on cars where the bonnet actually goes to the door. Um, I've seen that a few times, actually. Pretty sick idea. But that's not what we're doing because we're professionals. So I'll get that to there and professionally pull that back and feed the wire behind there, which I'm not going to be able to show much of until we get it in the boot. Now to do this bit, you might find that it's easier to pull this panel off and take that bolt out because the wire's sort of getting stuck somewhere around, somewhere around, that's not the right wire that I'm showing is it? The wire's getting stuck just behind that there, but if you're anything like me, you climb in the boot and you will struggle with it for hours rather than getting one spanner, which is what I'm going to do now off camera and that's the easier one of the two out because uh the other way it's thinner and sometimes it's easier to work with something that's got some girth to it um gotta get the blue wire through now
doing the same thing. As if by magic, we have now run our two, well, two of the three wires that we need. Um, but like I said, we've still got the my level inputs to run, which I'm going to have to run from the rear speakers. But for now, we've got our two main feed wires, well, main feed wire and remote wire, all out of sight, out of mind. And put our rubber Johnny door frame back on. And there we have. All goes up to the stereo. And if you didn't want it better, Oh, you wouldn't even know that they were there, would you? Because it's a skillful, skillful installation, this. So, next, we need to, well, we need to connect it to the battery at some point. But next, let's get some other stuff sorted. Like installing more wires, the eye level inputs, which means running some speaker wires from the back of these speakers in the back to here. Now we've got a speaker wire, so I'm using some, not well, one on foot. I'm just using some twin core wire, which will do. Um, speaker wire is obviously preferable if you've got it, but I can't find any, so this is what I'm using. So I need to, well, I need to get that wire connected to the back of that speaker and the back of that speaker. So that's what I'm going to do now. More running shit wires. But if I can help it, I don't actually want to undo these screws because they're into speed clips that, I mean, I'd have to get my hand behind to hold them still because they're not in properly. Um, they're just working like nuts. So I need to pull this off. Well, I've pulled, carefully pulled this panel off. And then I can get to said wires and uh, tee into them. Which in my case, I've just done it like this. So I need to plug that back into the speaker and then cut the wire off at roughly the right length is where I need it. So we need to run this back. Back to here. Plug our spades back in. As you can see really well. Like that. And uh, it's confusing looking here because there's a dog next door that's called Tim, which is incidentally my name. And whenever the dog shouted, I'd turn around. That dog. Anyway, I need to run this wire where it's not going to catch anything. Well, I'll just where it fits, like the others, until it pops out where it is doing now. So it's pretty much right. So let's do the other side. Well, once I put all this back together. That sounded like something fell off. But I can't see what it is, so I'm just going to carry on putting it back together. Alright, so we have... We have one high-level input for our amp. Um, to be honest, it will work off just one. But I'm going to use two because, as I've mentioned multiple times, this is professional. So I'm going to do the other side. And then once I've done that, I will come back. Because it's just the same as this side. So there's no point in filming both of them. And then we end up with something similar or like this where we have our high level imports our remote and our power and then our earth which needs mounting to the bodywork uh, so i need to connect all this now i'll bring the amp and i'll connect all this to the amp before connecting the rest of it to the battery and what i've done is because i haven't got the right plug for this high level import i've just soldered the wires onto the pins put a bit of heat shrink over them um, and put these bullet connectors on so if i do want to take it out i can unplug it without you know cutting the wires or desoldering it um so i'm going to cut all the wires to length so that they all line up to the terminals where they want to be because they're a bit too long at the moment um and then i've got these ends to put on to fit onto them um and that's what i'm going to do next like that so i've cut the wires down to length i'll just connect that in uh, i've left it disconnected just to show that what i have done is something spectacular and on the side this is the car side this is the amp side so if i do unplug it the insulated side that's connected to the speak wire um so yeah just just thought i'd point that out but i'll connect i'll push that together these are all shortened to the correct penis length and these are two so 
I need to put the ends on. Like I say, I've got some ends there and then connect all that into that. And I did try and crimp that on, but as you can see, it's made a right fuck up of it. So I'm going to solder it. Stay still. What a wind up, look at that, it's moving away, look, look, it's running away. Look, what a piss to take. So that's one soldered. Nice and pretty, obviously. Bit of beach drink over it for no reason at all. Yes, and I'll do the same with the earth one as well. And then we're left with something that looks like this. So, power connected, the remote wire which goes to the back of the stereo, as I've said. Um, I had a crimp fork connection for that which I've put on, and the negative which I've put onto the and just put it to the easiest place possible, which was the boot latch. Uh, could do with something to stop this moving around, but for now it'll be all right. And as you can see, that is a perfect fit. And now, just got to connect the battery up and twiddle some knobs to make it sound something like. Which takes us to this end and our power feed, which needs to run through this fuse. So, before I do anything else, I need to stick this over the wire, like so, and then put the wire in there and tighten that glove screw up onto it. And then once I have done that, nice and essentially, tighten that back up, nip that up, mount that, I'm just going to stick it there and just put a screw in that's fat enough to go into I mean, you shouldn't really screw into the battery, but that bit's just solid plastic, so I can put it into that bit. And then come out the other side, another bit of wire and connect it to our battery until we are left with this which i have took that nut off there because i'm going to connect this up and uh well see what happens really uh, that's power to our amp the main power oh no look, look it's everything's going everywhere try again look at this frustration most annoying thing is watching someone else do something badly and you know you can do it better and I'm sure you all experience that right now um, no smoke yet let's just nip this up and then we'll get ready for the massive disappointment when it doesn't actually work and now for the moment of truth to see if it actually works and it does which is surprising so now let's see how it sounds before and after well you know what i'm gonna have to do a bit of tinkering with it first try and set it up a little bit because this is i'm not even adjusted anything yet uh, there isn't a whole lot to adjust in here i've just got to mess with the play with knobs on the uh on the sub itself um but then see if i can get it sounding something like and although it works, I seem to have run into a problem, which I can't demonstrate on this because the issue is when I connect my phone. When I use Bluetooth and play music over it, it doesn't work. There's, there's no bass coming through. I don't know if it's because the audio from the iPhone is compressed to where there's no bass in it, but I don't think so because it works in the other car uh, with the sub. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not that. It's something to do with this stereo filtering out the... Uh, well, filtering out the bass. So I can't really compare it before and after because I can't put the same song through it because I'm limited to what I can play because I'm, well, it's radio. Only the radio I can get to work with the sub. So there's no point in showing it inside the car because you can't hear it. So I'll show it from outside the car just briefly. Uh, if I do it for too long, it'll flag up a fucking copyright infringement like it usually does when the radio's on in background. So I'll just have to do it quick. Um, but yeah, it's pretty loud. It's, it's all right, you know. It's it's for what it is. I mean, it's nothing. You know, it's only a little sub, in it. But yeah, I'll, I'll show you anyway. So something that is also a bit of an issue is I have never had a parcel shelf for this car, and for two reasons: that 
isn't brilliant because one, the main reason is this subwoofer, it will look better in an acoustically correct environment. Um, so the sealed, you know, obviously the parcel shelf will be hermetically sealed from the rest of the car then, um, which will make a massive difference. And the issue number two is you can see that through the window, which you've just seen. And yeah, all right, it's, it's you know, it's nickable. So we have had, as I've shown you in other videos, um, we have had bag heads in the area, you know, before now. But for now, I'll just have to use this one, even though it's the wrong one, because it's for a later model. I'll just have to use this one that I uh, found in someone else's car, which I'll have to do. I'll just install this one. Even though, like I say, it's not the right one for the car because the pegs are different sizes. Look, that's got small pegs for the newer ones. From the older ones, we've got the big pegs. Put it sit on there. And it's better than nothing. Perfect-ish. So yeah, that's all for this one. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with that for what it is. I mean, it's only 250 watt. I mean, it's 12 inch, 250 watt. It's only in a small car. But for what it is, it sounds pretty... It sounds all right. I mean, it's by no means the loudest or the best system I've ever had, but it's, you know, bang for buck and ease of installation. Well, it would be a lot easier if, if that fucking thing there, if that had um, phono wipes on it, it would have been much easier, but it didn't. So that sort of made it a bit more difficult. But if you do have phono plugs, that's about as easy as it gets to install a sub. Um, and it does, if I could get it working on Bluetooth, that would be much better i can't suss that out i mean i've not looked that much but i can't suss it out so if anyone knows why i mean it might be something to do with the phone i don't know but if anyone knows why the bass doesn't come through when i'm using the stereo through bluetooth you know mention it in comments i'm up for i'm open to what ideas on that one uh, but yeah other than that it's uh yeah it's pretty good so yeah uh don't forget to comment like subscribe if you intend to watch any more of these stupid videos um and like i said oh yeah check us out on instagram i forgot to mention that uh stupid blog stupid videos with underscores between everything uh, so yeah see you next time anyway peace out bro